Okay, today we are going to make a polygon hierarchy. So I'm going to start out by writing the word polygon at the very top of my paper. I know that polygons are made of two-dimensional figures. Okay, from the polygon, I'm going to create a branch for triangles and a branch for quadrilaterals. Triangles are three-sided figures and quadrilaterals are four-sided figures. I'm going to start first with the triangles and arrange them in two different ways. The first way will be according to their angles. And the second way will be according to their sides. A triangle can be sorted in three different ways. The first way is, is by having all of their angles being acute, which means that all of them have a measure less than 90 degrees. We call this an acute triangle. The second way is if the triangle has one right angle with two acute angles. We call it a right triangle. And the third way is if one of the angles in the triangle is greater than 90 degrees, that's an obtuse angle, so we can call it an obtuse triangle. We can also classify a triangle by the measure of its sides. So if we measure the three sides of a triangle and all three of them are equal, we call this I'm going to bring this a little further down. We bring that we call this an equilateral triangle. If you look at the root word, it, it has the word equal in it. So that means all three sides of the triangle are equal in length. The second way we can classify triangles according to its sides are if you measure the sides and two of the sides are the same, we call this an isosceles triangle. And the last way we classify triangles according to their sides so if we measure the three sides of the triangle and none of them have the same length, then we call that a scalene triangle. So this is a hierarchy of triangles. Now we're going to talk about how we could classify or group quadrilaterals. I know that the root word quad in quadrilaterals means four, so these are four-sided figures. 
we can separate these into two different categories. The first category would be one set of parallel lines. One set of parallel lines. And I'm actually going to write out this definition for you. One set of parallel lines. And this has a specific name. The specific name of this is called a trapezoid. Secondly, we can classify quadrilaterals if they have two sets of parallel lines. So I'm going to write this definition out also. And it also has a specific name. It's called a parallelogram. A parallelogram that has four right angles or four 90 degree angles is called a rectangle. So I'm going to write this definition out. There is a special kind of rectangle that has four right angles that also has four equal sides. And it is called a square. I'm going to go back up here to the parallelogram and I can branch off of the parallelogram another category that has four equal sides and that is called a rhombus. Now, a square can be an example of a rhombus because a square also has four equal sides. So I'm going to connect the rhombus and the square together. So let's go through the quadrilateral hierarchy one more time. If a quadrilateral has no sets of parallel lines, then that's where its name stops. It can only be called a quadrilateral. But if it has one set of parallel lines, you can also call it a trapezoid. So it, has, it can be called a polygon, a quadrilateral, and a trapezoid. If a quadrilateral has two sets of parallel lines, then it's called a parallelogram. So it's given the name of polygon, quadrilateral, and parallelogram. You can break the parallelograms down further into separate categories, and parallelograms that have four right angles can be called rectangles. So they're given the name polygon, quadrilaterals, parallelogram, and rectangle. Now, if that rectangle that has four right angles also has equal, four equal sides, then it can be called a square. So it can be called a polygon, quadrilateral, parallelogram, rectangle, and square. Let's go back up to the parallelograms. And if there's a parallelogram that has four equal sides, it's called a rhombus. But notice that a square is an example of a rhombus. It's just a rhombus that's special and has four right angles, so it's also called a rectangle. However, all rhombi are not squares. Some examples of a rhombus is a square, but there are some examples of a rhombus that are not a square.
Now, there are other polygons that we could branch off of this, not just triangles and quadrilaterals. We could go on further and branch off with pentagons and hexagons and octagons and, and so on. These are just the um, broken down hierarchies of triangles and quadrilaterals. But as you move forward in your math career in sixth grade, you're going to learn more about the attributes of other types of polygons. In fifth grade, we're just hitting the triangles and the quadrilaterals.